Hello everyone, this is Coach Isaiah, back with our next coaching video. For years, we at FastCat have had parents asking how their junior cyclist stacks up against other junior racers, both nationally and internationally. This is a tough question to answer for a few reasons. To start, competition can be pretty hard to compare as field depth tends to vary significantly based on where the athlete lives and or competes. So for example, if a child lives in a town that has five other junior racers and that child wins pretty consistently, how does that compare to athletes winning in cities that can field races of over 50 juniors? Another reason is juniors are earlier in their athletic development, so knowing what phase of development a junior athlete is in can be pretty individualized. So this has led me to put together a junior power profile chart to help junior athletes and parents know how their junior athlete compares to others and what level or phase of development that even puts them in. It's important, of course, to remember that data is not everything. You can be the strongest rider in the race, but if you do not learn how to use your strengths and play tactics wisely, then you will most likely never win. With that said, having the ability to compare your peak metrics to others can give insight into strengths and weaknesses, highlight underdeveloped areas, and point out what races to even target. Another great advantage is knowing what level the junior is currently at in order to choose a development pathway that really tailors to growth. So even as early as five years ago, gathering data from juniors would have been very difficult. But nowadays, many, many athletes are starting to use power at a very young age. So by sorting through quite an extended, extensive range of Strava files and or other online data, and also from using data from athletes that FastCat has coached over the years, I have been able to compile a junior power profile chart inspired by the chart Andy Coggin has popularized but now with a junior focus. As you likely will notice, this chart is only for male junior athletes. I am currently working on the female side, so stay tuned in the future for that. Now, the chart. For the junior power profile chart, I chose to include three markers for comparison. These three markers are one minute power, five minute, and 20 minute power. I chose one minute to highlight an athlete's ability to sustain maximum power and go deeper than their ability to hit max power off the line. This is the true neuromuscular marker of sorts. Now, five minute power is a number where you start to see the athlete's power curve really take place. And it's a very important number in almost all racing disciplines. This is a key for climbing, breakaways, initiating solo moves, and even finishing moves to win bike races. Then the 20 minute is included as a good marker to measure FTP and long range power for juniors. Functional threshold watts per kilo is often compared with the 60 minute marker, but for juniors, I believe that the 20 minute mark is more doable. Most athletes will have the ability to achieve a 20 minute test and put in an honest effort for comparison. For young athletes, pacing can make achieving true long efforts difficult. Uh, maturity and understanding of efforts and understanding of their bodies can um, you know, make those 60 minute markers difficult to achieve, but I believe that 20 minute mark is reachable and will give us what we need. So how did I get these numbers? As I mentioned earlier, these numbers are from a pool of hundreds of athletes and files that are both pulled from public files on Strava and other resources or pulled from my current and past athletes. So just as Coggin did, I chose to work from the top down. So pulled from world champions and then worked down through the other categories. This brings us to the categories. So the first category is world-class. This is the best in the world range. These are athletes that have won world championships and um, or other world competitive events um, and are you know, really on the fast track to the top level in their sport. You know, for world, uh, for road racing, that is world tour, of course. So this category, is, as far as development goes, represents mature progression in their physical development. While they might have still a long way to go to reach their full potential, they are very well developed physically, and with these numbers, should have the ability to compete against the best in the world. 
A um, few examples of these are Taylor Finney, Lawson Craddock, more recently Brandon McNulty, and of course the likes of Matthew Vanderpool and Wow Venner. For the young athletes um, that can hit these watts per kilo but do not have race experience, the best thing to do is try to attend the very best races in the world and really focus on learning everything possible about tactics and other finer nuances of bike racing so that their experience can play catch up of sorts on their physical ability. Next category, exceptional. So this is a range for athletes that are able to win nationally and with good race craft could compete internationally. This category to me is the sweet spot for athletes and potential. This is kind of like the dream range for team directors um, that find athletes who show that they have plenty of room to grow and develop, but also are very obviously national, naturally talented. If athletes find themselves here, I would focus on getting yourselves to as many national level races as possible to gain the most experience there as possible before then looking ahead to the world stage. Also keep working on development, train, you know, train hard uh, to push your power curve and to see if that world-class category is within reach. This is a great example of when athletes should be looking at national governing body development camps uh, like the ODA or hiring a coach and um, finding teams that can really help them grow and give them those opportunities. All right, then finally, the has potential category. This category represents athletes that are at the level to compete locally, but race and power development should still be the primary focus. This, with, this is when an athlete has the potential to really grow and rise through exceptional and even world-class categories. Uh, but the athlete should focus on growing at a slower pace and keeping the pressure off themselves. These are still very good athletes with high level of potential, but I would advise sticking local and really learning racing and also taking time to really grow potential before jumping you know, headfirst into bigger national or world level events. This is actually the category that I would have landed in when I was a junior. You know, as a late bloomer, it took me a little while to grow and mature in the sport. But once I gave it time and focus it really needed, I hit my stride and found my way to the professional ranks. So if you're looking to determine where an athlete lands in comparison to the world stage, and then from there help craft short-term training and long-term progression and development, start with finding where your junior lands on the power profile chart and what category that then puts them in. Then you can work forward with either a fast track plan, a conservative plan, or you know somewhere in the middle. Remember that juniors by definition are young and the goal of being lifelong athletes should always be on the list of priorities. Keep in mind maturity, both physically and mentally, and remember that the key to success is always more than one single variable. Thanks again for watching, and please let me know what you think of my new junior power profile chart and if you found it useful. Thanks again, until next time.